It's the weekend, so nice and slow. Who wouldn't just chill out in the shade, everyone taking it easy. If I were to come and stay on this island, I think I'd actually prefer to stay in the village. It was a bit wet here so we decided we'll go and check out Mantanani Island instead which is about 12 miles offshore. I uh, haven't got a very good weather forecast so we're not entirely sure what it's going to be like. Of course being out there it could be subject to swell or maybe some adverse winds but uh, we have the luxury of being able to get out there and if we are not comfortable with it we could either come back here or go down to the next little, little, an little, little, little anchorage just down the coast. So we're coming into Mantanani Island. Uh, we set off in beautiful sunny weather, it was lovely. Wind wasn't quite there, but it's been a pleasant journey. And as we're coming in, I've just put my jacket on because I'll have to do the anchor and it looks to me like it's going to bloody rain. What do you think? Yeah, I've been looking at the uh, radar, the weather radar, and it's just suddenly developed. It developed after we left. It literally just developed there and uh, they tend to sort of come offshore and kind of they're gonna kiss Mantanali so I think we might get a little bit wet this is Mantanani and we are anchored in a little round patch of sand in among reefs that uh, actually got breaking waves on them just over there, literally about 150 metres away, breaking waves, breaking waves over there, and uh, quite a few rocks, but of course this is where satellite images come in and uh, able to find a little sandy patch. So, here we are. We know nothing about Mantanani, except it's a sort of holiday island, and Sutra, uh, the hotel where the marina was, where we stayed in KK, has its own little resort over there, and I just got in contact with Rick, the uh, manager, and he said, it's open. The reason we were so excited about this particular visit to the shore is it was the first time we'd taken the dinghy somewhere brand new in months. Months, mm. months and months actually, not since last year. And in fact, as I was editing the video, I realized that this is going back to our roots. This yeah. is follow the boat, old school sailing and traveling. It's okay. what we love doing. It, it is, that is what yeah. we're all about. And uh, I think in that, uh, in the precursor to this little chat, I'd actually said that it's a resort island and Mantanani isn't really a resort island. There's two very distinct sides to Mantanani. There are the resorts on one end of the island. And then of course there's the Kampong, the local fishing village at the other end. And it got me thinking, if we hadn't have visited on the boat, yeah. but had gone as tourists, yeah. which would we have preferred to have stayed in? One of the posh resorts or in a homestay in the fishing village? Mm, difficult choice. Mm. Have a look, see what you think and let us know what you would do. We are going to visit the island of Mantanani. Uh, we're wearing our masks because we don't want to scare them. Um, we'll see how it goes, but outside, usually on a beach, you don't have to worry too much, but we just want to be doing the right thing. So this is a beautiful island. It's got quite flash resort hotels on it at one end and then there's a kampong where the locals live right right here right here we are on the beach of Mantanani and first thing we met was a local called Arbi and I think he was trying to explain the number of cases from Mantanani of Covid uh, but it doesn't seem like anyone's wearing masks here. The second thing we've spotted is a cow. 
on the beach. Have you ever seen a cow on the beach before? Here it is. This is a beautiful idyllic beach on a perfect, lovely, sandy island in the middle of the, uh, what is this? It's South China Sea, isn't it? And this is very much a working beach. You know, you've got buildings right up to the edge of it, fishing boats everywhere, children playing, people working on their boats, washings out. I mean, it's a real working beach. It's definitely not a holiday beach. And this is how people used to live all around this area before they were cleared out and the hotels were built. Uh, and they're still doing it here. This is the local Kampong. I should imagine it's mostly fishing. At the other end of the island are a couple of kind of super resorts. I should think we're going to see a very different beach there. People are interesting, they'll um, catch your eye and if you smile or wave, they'll smile back. But they aren't particularly, oh, I've got a rope to climb over. But they aren't particularly inquisitive, not asking for anything, not running round us. Very different to what we've experienced in places like Thailand and some of the more built up and commercial areas. I love it here. Where are we losing? Uh, we've come to a little shop. The name of this village, is it, does it have a name? No. It's, a, it's the little kampong, there's a little shop right on the beach here. They've got a menu up there but there's no food. It's called Kayu Manis, Mantanani Cafe. I guess they're a bit closed at the moment. But we've got a couple of cold sweetie cans to drink from, showing willing. <laughs> Despite lockdown and the restrictions placed on tourism in Sabah, the local fishermen are still allowed to work. They were using this shop to resupply their boats with sacks of rice, which of course is the staple for those going to work at sea in this area. Coconut. Alam kita. Uh, so that was a local coconut chopper upper who we met in the shop. Uh, so Soka, I think, is coconut, which he just reminded me of. Just interesting walking up and down these beaches. Yes, it's another tropical island. And, you know, having been to the Caribbean and also to the Maldives, all of these islands obviously share a number of things in common. Of course, the sandy beaches, the uh, crystal clear waters, the coconut trees, the houses on the stilts. We found in the Maldives, people uh, very much kept themselves to themselves. And the same can be said of these guys here. The difference is, is that once you crack a smile, next thing you know, you're best friends for life. Hello, how are you? There's a guy there with an umbrella, with no umbrella. Liz has got a little hermit crab. Hello. <laughs> so anyway, as I was saying, uh, lots of similarities. Uh, but the one big difference here, of course, is that you get this perspective of the Sabah po coastline because we're, well, we're about 10 miles, maybe not even that offshore. And you just get this fantastic vista uh, especially on a lovely clear day, even today actually, with a little bit of cloud, just that uh, amazing uh, mountainscape that ends up in a great big peak at the tip of uh, Kota, Kin sorry, at Mount Kinabalu. And when you see it from this angle, it looks like a doorstep. It's like this, with a sheer drop down the other side. Super impressive, and you get very good views of this first thing in the morning. And that's one of the differences, because of course the Maldives, by comparison, is completely flat. And we always said, much as we love the Maldives, the one thing we missed was mountains. And you've got them here in abundance. If you know us well, then you know that we don't really do promotions and we don't do sponsorship deals. It's not really our bag. But very occasionally, occasionally, someone will contact us at just the right time with just the right product. And this is it. This is a shoe by a leader. Over to you, Maestro. Okay, you know us. You know that we don't normally do sponsorships on Follow the Boat. Uh, we tried it once and it didn't really work out for us. So uh, what we're doing today is going for a little walk, but we are testing out some footwear that was sent to us. Now this uh, company, A Leader, got in touch with us and said, look, we'd like you to try out this footwear. And we ummed and about it, but we looked at the designs and A, we like the design. 
and B, they are specific for uh, water and land-based activities. So we thought, well, why not? Let's just give it a go. So while this video isn't sponsored by a leader, we are going to be testing them out today. It's a slightly unfair test because normally we would just be wearing these to get on and off the dinghy, to wade through the water and walk up and down the beaches. Uh, but today we're with Sharon and Lindsay and we're going on a big trek up over the hill uh, to the bay to the other side. So we're going to really put these uh, shoes to the test. The reason why we're mentioning this now is because from here on in you're going to be seeing us wearing our A-leader footwear, especially when we're getting in and out of the dinghy and climbing ashore on the beach. Now as you know really you should wear footwear on the beach a couple of years ago, I got an infection in my toe because mm -hmm. I was spending a lot of time walking barefooted in the sand mm -hmm. and contracted it from dog poo. Yeah, you got a worm. It was revolting, oh, absolutely revolting. <laughs> so from here on in, we always wear footwear. Now, the problem with footwear, especially in the saltwater environment and climbing in and out of dinghy, is that they get battered. And I have to say, they are a really good bit of footwear. And the reason why I like them in particular is because they got holes in the sole, which doesn't really makes sense except think about it when you climb in and out of the dinghy and you're getting your foos your, your foos your foos your, your, your feet your, yeah, your feet yeah. or your shoes both both okay your yes foos. your foos <laughs> when your foos get covered in sand and salt water uh, they don't drain out but the great thing about having holes in the sole is they do and uh, of course it makes them that much more lightweight. We've been walking through jungles, we're going on, we're going on treks, uh, on the beach obviously, climbing over rocks. I particularly love, love these, they're like socks. They're incredibly, incredibly comfortable and extremely lightweight as Jamie says. And, I, and it's, you just feel like you're hardly wearing anything on your feet. To have a pair of shoes that you can just slip on and off and that are really comfy and do the job yeah, a leader. Well done. Mm. Thank you for getting in touch we, with us. We were pleasantly we surprised. Yeah, yeah, we were surprised. Yeah, so so yeah. this isn't just a promo no. and we're not getting paid for no. this, by the way. But we do have some super discounts for you if you are interested. And of course, summer's coming up. So for our YouTube viewers, we have a discount code which gets you 15% off your purchase from a leader. If you are a follow the boat supporter, an FTB mate or a Patreon, then you get 20% off. You should already have received that special code. Uh, but uh, they've got a whole range of shoes, a uh, really good website as well. So go and check them out and use the discount code that's in the description. Yeah, well done, A Leader. And just a word on sponsorship. If you're thinking of getting in contact with us, don't unless you know it's something we're really going to like. Not like the one I had yesterday, which was about a dating forum. Well, you could join that, you never know, you might get something out of it. <laughs> Sometimes I get the impression that uh, people who watch our videos get a bit pissed off with us highlighting all the plastic everywhere, but um, it is something that we see a lot of. And whilst the beach was fairly clean, there's a lot of shit around here. And the reason why I mention this is because yesterday when we came over, we caught something on the prop. Uh, I went down this morning and found that there was a very thick plastic bag wrapped around the prop. Uh, had to pull at it to free it up. And um, unfortunately this is one of the problems with sailing in this part of the world, is the amount of crap in the water. And yesterday after catching it around our prop, I was cursing and swearing and just getting a little bit depressed by this because we see it everywhere. It is one of the pitfalls of sailing in Southeast Asia. This is a resort we're walking through to get to the Sutra Resort, which has weathered the storm, but it looks like a lot of places, including this one, have been affected badly by the lack of tourism here on Sabah. So this normally would have been buzzing with people, and sadly, it's just all falling down around us. Oh, take a look at this view. This is what tropical island life is all about. Well, we're just walking towards the bar now, I hope, and uh, there's a whole load of new builds here. So it seems as if uh, Covid hasn't stopped any kind of development going on at this resort, but uh, you've got that lovely smell of fresh wood here. Uh, the least reckons these are probably shops, who knows, uh, but they're working on them. So uh, at least there is progress 
and perhaps a sign that tourism will in 2021 uh, pick up for everyone. Let's hope so because obviously a lot of people in Sabah rely on the tourism industry as people do around the world. said to Liz that uh, if I were to come and stay on this island I think I'd actually prefer to stay in the village than at one of those posh resorts. It's got so much atmosphere this place and what's interesting is that they're all on stilts. A lot of people spend their time underneath their house where it's coolest. That's a homestay there behind you. Oh there we go it's and a homestay. One Well, how pretty is Mantanani village, eh? It's so nice to walk back through the kampung uh, rather than along the beach and get to just a little taste of local life, which really at this time of day when it's hot boils down to hanging out underneath their houses in their hammocks. We saw a couple of guys doing a bit of work on some motorbikes. Uh, really just uh, everyone taking it easy. It's the weekend, so who wouldn't just chill out in the shade, nice and slow, and people like us slip in a couple of beers for a sundowner. <laughs> 